we have lots of different types of technology that we have to pull into one common computer system so that the forecasters can sit there and look at it and make sense of what they're seeing. Uh, the, the variety of data coming in are, are mind-boggling in some ways. Uh, prime, our primary tool when we get into severe weather operations is the radar, the Doppler radar in particular. The Doppler radar gives us the ability to see storm motion as well as where the storms are, where the heavy rain is, and where it may be hailing. But having the storm motion tells us a lot more as well in terms of where the rotation might be, where the tornadoes might be. Satellite is another uh, key tool for us. The satellite sits out there in space and takes pictures uh, quite frequently and sends the information down to us and allows us to kind of fill in the gaps between the radars and see what's happening out there that the radar might not be able to see. And then the observations, the, 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 what's happening at the surface, temperature, wind direction, wind speed, all that information is really important to the forecaster, and that is brought all into that same computer system that the forecasters rely on. Most of the advances we've seen in our weather-specific technologies like radar, satellite, and so on have occurred because of advances in computing power. Just like your computers at home have gotten faster, bigger, more capable, so do the computers that support our radar systems, our satellites, and the workstations where our forecasters do their job 24 hours a day, seven days a week. One of the greatest advances we've had most recently is what we call dual pole radar, dual polarization radar. Uh, essentially what that does is it samples the storms in not only a horizontal plane but also in a vertical plane. It's a little, little simplistic way to describe that. But it, it, we're able to see the, the, the particles inside the storm with much more precision, much more detail. When you think about the technological changes that have happened over the past several years, I, I first say, well, think about your own life. Think about how smartphones have revolutionized the way you get information. Facebook has been around for a while, but increasingly people look at Facebook on a smartphone now, or they have an app. And what's happening is the technology is allowing us to interact with people on a more personal basis, more frequently, and almost anywhere. And we're trying to keep up with those trends uh, and, and make sure that we get them the information that they need when they need it.